Hi, Home Talkers. How are you today? So good to see you on another live DIY demo. I'm Sharon and I blog over at iRestoreStuff. That's i-restorestuff.com. I'm from Australia and we are gearing up for a really hot, hot Christmas over here. So if you're on the other side of the world, that's nice because you get the snow, but we're in the middle of heat over here. And so it's a really hot day, but we're going to talk um, stenciling today. So um, if you're a beginner or if you're really good at stenciling, you might find something here for you. So today we'll be um, giving all of our pro tips, well, as many as I can think of, and you might have your own excellent tips that you can throw in on the comments about, all about stenciling. So I know that a lot of people uh, you know, go to stencil and they figure this has just got to be so easy, but then they end up with what we call bleeding or seeping underneath the stencil onto their sign or their wood or whatever. So hopefully we can alleviate some of those problems by sharing a few little tips today. Uh, we're going to be just using this sign board. If you want to, while we're waiting for others to come on and join us, let me know where you're coming in from and I'd love to hear where you're tuning in from. All over the world, yay! So it's all about stencils today. If you've just joined me, I'm Sharon from I Restore Stuff and we're going to be stenciling some signs today. Now, stencils are such a great thing for all, si all sorts of stuff. You can, um, you know, mention in the comments what other things you could stencil on, but uh, I stencil on furniture. It is a great way to update your furniture. We can make signs with it, uh, all sorts of great things. We can even make backgrounds with other stencils and create other graphics on top. So. I have with me, as you can see, a whole different lot of stencils. Um, <clears throat> some of these have been made by Donna Williams from Funky Junk Interiors. So shout out to you, Donna, if you're listening. She creates some awesome stencils. But uh, today we're going to be making a sign. Now, talking about holidays, Christmas coming up and you're wanting to do a Christmas craft, if you don't have any Christmassy stencils, we're going to be talking about that today too, how you can create Christmas signs or holiday type themed signs even when you don't have Christmassy stencils. So uh, one thing you can do to make it Christmassy is make a sign as a gift. So we could make this sign as a beautiful gift for someone for Christmas and wouldn't that be awesome so they can make like an old rustic sign for their house. <coughs> speaking about, oops, speaking about holidays, you know we could do this what, what, what did I do before? Okay, we might do this one, beach house. So today we'll work on the beach house stencil sign. Uh, and we could add, you can even add a little arrow to the end here. So we're going to make this one because to me a holiday in Australia would mean a beach house because <laughs> I'd like to go and get cool by the ocean. Where are we tuning in from today? I've got my good friend Shireen here. Um, we are tuning in from all over the world. All over today. the world. All Algeria. Over. I just saw yes. Algeria. Italy. Up on screen. Italy. Germany. Hi, Germany. Brazil. Hello. Brazil. And Canada. <coughs> Canada. And of course, all over the States. All over the USA. Lovely to have you tuning in today. We're talking stencils if you've only just joined us. Um, but of course, uh, we love to give you lots of DIY tips. My last couple of Home Talk Lives have been all about um, creating graphics on signs or furniture. So today's another one of those and we're going to be talking about stencils. So to get to have our stencils, um, to make our stenciling work great, we're going to need a few things. One of the things you will want to get is painter's tape. So painter's tape is not just any sticky tape, scotch tape. It actually doesn't peel off the existing paint here. So what we're going to do to just hold our stencil in place <clears throat> is use a little bit of painter's tape and you really only need a tiny bit and if you really want to be fussy you can get your ruler out and measure exact ends you know but I'm just going to eyeball it who else is just an eyeballer you're just like yep I'm just going to go for it because I think our eyes are pretty accurate I think I feel like mine might be but you might be really fussy and want to measure 
How are we going there, Shireen? Any comments that you want to comment on? <coughs> Someone's just said that their, their little 18-month-old girl is very excited and she's waving at you. So Aww, maybe give her a hello. little wave. And what's her name? Whatever her name is. <laughs> that little girl. Hi, little girl. From where? <laughs> Did she say where she's from? Who's Somewhere daughter in the States. Somewhere in the United States. Hello. Isn't that so exciting? She's waving to me like I'm talking right to her. And I so am. Um, I'm going to be using this beautiful colour. Look at that. Isn't it so beachy and coastal? Isn't it beautiful? And I want to let you know that we can just use any brush to stencil. And I'll show you a few different tips with stenciling with brushes. This one's quite a short bristle and it's more of a stenciling kind of a brush because it's flat on top. And that allows you to use a direct, what do you call it, vertical motion to do your stenciling. And we have a long brush here. So there's another tip that I can show you when you're using a long brush. Um, another very important thing that you will need when you're stenciling, I'll just reach back to my handy drawer back here, <coughs> is a newspaper or brown paper or a cloth, you can use that. Because one of the best tips that I've ever discovered in stenciling <laughs> is what we call offloading your brush. So that's the most important thing. So one of the questions I'm going to be asking you, if you do already stencil, and you may have seen this in my blog post over at irestorestuff.com or on my home talk profile, and the link will be right there. Hannah will put that in the, um, in the comments, is whether you are a stippler or a swirler. That is the question of the day. And you'll get to know exactly what I'm talking about as I do this. So as you can tell, I'm just using what I've got on the lid here. I don't know where I'm looking. Okay, so we've just got a little bit on the brush, on the ends. Notice it's not covering right up to the bristles here. But what we need to do is offload the paint from the brush onto a newspaper or a cloth, whatever you like. So that we've still, we've got a fairly dry brush. So having a dry brush is really important. So we're just wiping that off onto the newspaper until we've got hardly any left. Now, um, this is stippling, so we, it's using an up and down motion to, and now I've hardly got any paint on my brush, and it makes a lot of noise. And now you can see I actually need a little bit more paint on my brush if I'm doing this stippling motion, so I'm just going to stipple it all over the beach sign. Okay, so do we have people already knowing what I'm talking about there, Shireen, and do we have any stipplers? In the house. We are getting making a bit an of even mix of stippling and swirling. Oh, so they know what I'm talking about. Yes, they do. Okay, hands up. Big loves for all the stipplers as we stipple right now. <laughs> okay, there's Beach. I must admit, I only just discovered swirling recently and I think I'm liking it. Okay, so as we stipple, I'm going to show you this brush. <laughs> this brush. It's a... It's quite a stiff brush. So as you can see, I'm kind of working really hard to get that into the grooves. But when I, I'm going to change brushes now and show you that if you do have, if you don't have a stencil brush and you want to use a quite a long bristled brush, we do have another little way of doing that. So I'm just going to wet the tips, only the tips. Who's loving this colour? It's just so, and it matches beach house. It's just really coastal. It's called... How do you say that? As, azure? In Australia, we'd probably say Asia. What do you yeah, think, Sharon? I'd How do you say, say that? Azure. Azure. You but would say Azure. Sound I sound like a really posh person when I say Azure. So, um, and we can't ask the people how to say it because then I can't hear them. So anyway, did we say it right? Did I say Azure? Azure. Azure. It's a blue. It's like a really sea blue. So. If you have a brush that's got long bristles, just coat the tips of them. And as you can see, offloading here again. And what I'm going to do to make it a little bit more stiff, because if I just brushed it, if I just stippled here right now, oh, actually, I'm lying. It does actually work well. But when you come to swirling, it might not work as well. So I'll show you my handy tip then. But this one's actually working a whole lot better in stippling. And I'm, in fact, I'm going to go over there. I think that brush I was using was just a little bit too short. So, you know, why we're doing this is to prevent that 
bleeding or seeping through underneath the stencil. So if you've not done this before, two key factors are keep your stencil still with painter's tape if you've just joined us. Um, also lo offloading your brush, so wiping off as much as you can off your brush. I'm just going to do the beach part for now. And don't go away because we do have a giveaway coming up soon and we're going to ask you a giveaway question. So, and the giveaway will be a home talk tote bag. I totes want a tote bag, Shireen. <laughs> In fact, I might even have to go to New York to find my tote bag. I'm going to say, Anna, give me a tote bag. Sharon, okay. a couple of questions. Yes. Um, people are wondering, using that second brush, is it going to bleed through the stencil? Okay. So that's why I've offloaded as much as I can. So the keys are offloading your brush so that it's pretty, it's practically dry on the tips. So, you know, if I paint my finger there, there's nothing coming off. So if I just dipped it in, it'd be a mess. So we're offloading the brush and um, just doing an up and down motion like this will stop it seeping through underneath. If I was to brush along like this, I kind of don't want to show you my mistake you know, my bad stuff, because then my stencil is going to turn out bad. Maybe I could, I could demo on a, a little piece of wood, excuse me, while I grab one. Here's just a little sample board here. So I'm going to show you how not to stencil. Let's use my B from the bed and breakfast. I'm just going to do a letter B here. So if you can zoom in on this, I'll show you what happens if you do. Let's just have a look at this first. Can we zoom in here? The beach sign, hopefully, I'll just undo my painter's tape and we have a nice crisp edge there. Pretty crisp. So I'm just going to pop that back down because we need to do the house thing in a minute. But here's what happens. Hopefully it works to show you here's what happens, you know, when it doesn't work right. But if I've got too much on my brush and I don't offload it, holding it down like this. And also another thing people will tend to want to do when stenciling is going like this, up and down on their thing, or back and forth. When you do that, you get, if you can zoom in on that, you'll see that it's bleeding through underneath and you don't get a nice crisp edge. So I'll lift that up so you can compare the two. Whoop. So we have nice crisp B and then this one has quite a bit of dodgy edging on there. So to get those crisp edges, whoop, I need to line it up again now. To get your crisp edges, offloading your brush. And to clean your stencils, here's a great idea, a great tip, um, wash them right away. Or you can use a really gentle, uh, like a plastic scourer, not a metal one, but just a really um, gentle, gentle wash. Because you've got to really watch out for these really fine bits on your stencils. You don't want to be <coughs> flipping them so that they bend or are crooked in any way. Any questions so far, Shireen? How are we going there? Who are, how are we? Are there lots of different people tuning so in or having questions? Another question is yep. um, where you get the stencils from. Did you oh. make them yourself or have you purchased them? No, no, no. These ones I uh, got from through Fusion Mineral Paint, so you may find them through them. Or, um, I, but Donna. From Donna Williams from Funky Junk Interiors blog. She created these beach ones, these cabin ones, and it's some other old signs. So she's got some great old sign kind of things. So wherever um, Donna stocks them, if you check out Funky Junk Interiors, you might, <coughs> excuse me, might be able to find them there. All right, we're going to change colours now for the house part. Whoop. And I'm going to be using a grey colour to do that. And we're going to show you swirling. Hang on, I'm going to use a different brush over here. It's a little bit thicker. And again, this one's got longer bristles. <coughs> well, we don't have much paint left in this pot. But what we're going to do is tip our, wipe our brush off on the edge, wipe it off quite heavily on the paper until there's hardly any left. Because I'm going to show you swirling. So we have stipplers and swirlers. What do you prefer? Shireen, you said there was an even number of stipplers to swirlers. Let's see. Okay. I only just learned about swirling from um, Jenny Lynn. Thanks, Jenny Lynn, if you're watching. This is awesome technique. Um, Jenny Lynn Pringle. 
Okay, we hold our brush, not so much up and down, but we're gonna be swirling, doing a swirling motion. And the very, if you're gonna do swirling, you must have a dry brush. So see how I just keep wiping it off until there's hardly any left. So here's the key, our stencil is laid still, and we're gonna go swirl around like this. And we still don't get any bleed through this way because <clears throat> we have um, dried the brush off by offloading it. Oops, I'm getting over the edge here. You can put a little bit of paper if you think you're gonna do that, but you know, it's a rustic sign, so it's all going good. Okay, next one, and uh, the other tip I'll show you is um, with this brush, it's got longer bristles. So notice I'm gripping the brush down a little bit lower, which holds the bristles all together. So if I was just to hold it up here, I don't have as much control. But what I'm gonna do is just hold it down a little bit closer to the bristle edges. And remember, we've only just um, put paint on the very tips of the bristles. And you can see that as we swirl, we're gonna get this whole thing done a whole lot quicker. I think I'm a stippler guy. I mean, no, I think I'm a swirler. I've changed from stippling to swirling in the last couple of weeks. This is just really a nifty trick. So any more questions there? Please put your questions in the comments if you've got any about stenciling. Maybe you're a real pro stenciler and you've got some more tips for us. Let us know. We have had a couple of people ask do you use a particular kind of brush or is it just any with the longer bristles? Oh, you don't have to have long bristles. You can buy stencil brushes and I just didn't have any on hand apart from this little guy. And I think his bristles are a little bit too short because it's a bit too stiff. So, and, yes. And um, another person has asked, could you use spray paint or is that going to have the same effect, the, the oh, bleeding? That's true. You can use spray paint. Um, very good question. So you can spray your stencil. Um, the keys to spraying is to hold your can up a little higher and just gently, you know, you don't want to douse it. So you're just going to go running across if you're doing a can or if you're doing a spray gun, I can't imagine. You'd have to have a lot of newspaper around your furniture piece to be able to do that so that you don't get it everywhere else. Over spray, that's the thing. So we've done that and as you can see, it, you know, it's a little bit rough but we've got a rustic sign here. So as you can see, if you can... See that there? I'll just let you zoom in a little bit. <coughs> There's nice crisp edges. Woohoo! Mm. Beautiful. So that's our one sign, and you can use that as a beautiful gift for family, friends, or put it on your beach house. Does anyone have a beach house? That would just be wonderful. Beach house in the winter. Okay, thinking Christmas thoughts now, people, and we're getting ready to announce what our giveaway question would be. I've got a bunch of stencil signs here. Uh, where will I put this one? I can put it over here. Oh, here's another great, I just wanted to show you this. Can you get it on this, Marty? My wonderful husband, cameraman. Um, you can stencil on furniture. So this is a little dresser drawer I did and it's got dream big little one, beautiful little stencil and I've painted on the inside. So we've just got a, a slightly contrasting color. That's that same azure. Azure, Asia colour, Asia colour. <laughs> saying the wrong, I'm sure I'm saying it wrong every time. All right, now, thinking Christmas thoughts. Oh, and I'm going to show you something else too. But what I want to do by the end of this Home Talk Live demo is paint a Christmas sign. <clears throat> but to do that, I need your help. And here, we're, here is where the giveaway question comes in. And so you can get your thinking caps on and, and you might have a pen and paper ready to write down some words. It's kind of like a word game. So we've got a few stencils here that I can use. So you're going to tell me what to put on this holiday sign. So it has to be a Christmassy holiday word. Um, but we have, we've got to use the, the letters that I have. So here's what I'm talking about. If you don't have stencils at home, and Donna Williams, shout out to her, she gave me this brilliant idea. If you don't have Christmas stencils at home, make your own holiday um, stencils. So she made, you know, the word fall out of, you know, little block letters out of the existing stencils that she had. So you can't pick that one. Um, but if you can think of a Christmas word that we could put here, we've got the word 
house we can use. So all of the letters in house. You can look at the word beach. I'd probably prefer not to use these ones. We'll just stick with the big letters here. We have the word beach. So if you want to write these down. Uh, we have the word market, which I'll have to get that out of its little case. We have the word resort. We have the word rentals. So Sharon, you might be taking these words down. And cabin. Okay, so if you've written those down, or maybe Sharon can type them into the comments, or Hannah, whoever's listening and watching. Um, and if we've got all those words, we want to make this into a Christmas stenciled piece. But before we do that, we are going to create a background, because here's something wonderful that you can do with your stencil signs, is create a background. So we've got a few different background choices here. And there are probably some great Christmassy backgrounds, but once again, I was not, um, I didn't get any Christmas ones. We have a Moroccan stencil. Some of these you can get from my blog in Australia. If you're Australian, you can get some of these stencils. We've got a good little range there. This looks kind of Christmassy. What do you think, Shireen? Should I do this little guy? Or well, we've got uh, the words. Yeah. I like which, the words. You like the words? Mm. Even though we don't know what they say. Or we do, but it's, I, it looks you know, like a Christmas carol. It does, it kind of reminds me of, hey, that could be a Christmas carol. <laughs> That's right. And we have butterflies. Mm, may or may not be Christmassy. <clears throat> Let's go with the words, because Shireen said, okay. <laughs> so we're going to make a background for our Christmas sign here right now. So all you have to do, you know what, this could take a long time. But because I've just turned into a swirler, I think it's not going to take as long as we thought. But I need a, another, I need a colour and I need another paintbrush. <clears throat> Let's go with this one. Okay, so I'm going to go with a white colour because red and white just seems Christmassy. I don't want to do red and green because it's it might just be not stand out as much. Do you think? Or maybe it needs to be a background. No, I'll do the white and then we'll do the words in a dark colour. All right, so got my newspaper right here. Any other questions while you're travelling along there? Have we got some words coming in, some ideas for my Christmas sign here? Shari? So many, so many good ideas. Are they using all the yeah. letters that we suggested? Lots I hope that they wrote them down because... Yes, someone has very helpfully put all the words up. So oh, that you good on look. you. Thank you so much for doing that. And so um, if you don't know what the words... Now, I'm just using my painter's tape again to make sure I've got my sign in place. This side, I can't put the painter's tape on. I'm just randomly putting the words on the sign and we're making a background. So here's our... Here's our stencil lettery stuff. We're just going to offload again, offloading, making it dry and away we go. So here's the part where I need to hear all your wonderful suggestions for making... <coughs> My Christmas sign. What have we got going, coming out there? Shireen, my okay. good friend. Some of the suggestions that we've got. Oh. One is ho, ho, ho. Ah, you could do ho, ho, ho. very yes. clever. I yes, thought. only using two letters. Fantastic. Yes. Just using the first part. A few other variations on ho, ho, ho. Yes. Um, we have a couple of people who've suggested Santa. Okay. We could make uh, Santa from all those letters. Then we've had some really good variations on Santa. Okay. Santa's house. Ooh, hey. We can make that from all those letters. Yes, and, or Santa's wow. cabin. Oh, because yes. Because you've got the cabin and the I house I didn't even sign. think of that. See, that's why no, you guys are watching, because you're so good at all these ideas, and then I get to do them, and you get to do them, and we can create together. How wonderful. Next. Now, How someone many? else is... I, I, I'm trying to check all the letters as I go. Um, all is calm. I think we have all those letters. Wow. Um, See, that's why I got you, Shireen, because you're so good at... <laughs> you are good. You're really... My friend Shireen is really good at these word games. She's a champion Scrabble person. If you're ever on... What is it? Words with friends oh, or one of those. So. <laughs> she is so good at those games. I don't play her anymore because she's too good. Okay, what else have we got? Any other suggestions? Uh, another one we've got... Uh, Melissa has suggested Noel. Ah, um, nice. A few others that I'm not quite sure we've Noel. got all the letters for, but if you had all the letters, you could have uh, Feliz Navidad if you had some different... Uh, oh, yeah. 
Is we that, could. Do we have those one? letters or not? No. That is, a couple of people are coming up with some other great ideas. I think they might have oh, okay. different sets of stencils. Yes. Well, that's right. You could have a number of different stencils at your place that you could make this out of. Now, I'm just doing this quite roughly here because we are live people and we don't have all day. I know some people get a little frustrated and they go, can I just, you know, hit fast forward, but hey, we're live. <laughs> so it's going to take as long as it takes. And we are enjoying the conversation, aren't we? Everybody, Shireen. A couple of questions anymore. for you, yeah. Sharon. Um, the question is, a few, quite a few people are asking, what type of timber are you using? I am using, here we go, just a pine board. So it's actually just raw timber and I've painted it red or whatever colour you like to paint it. So here I go, I'm just lifting up, I'm going to shift this across so you can see we've got words on there now. And I'm just going to shift the words across and <laughs> I'm not even going to match them up because that would be too tricky. Um, we're just going to make a new, oh well, I'll have to blend something here. And you know what, I'm not going to be able to use my painter's tape, so I'm just going to have to try and be really professional about this and hold it really still. And again, we're eyeballing it because that's how we roll here at I Restore Stuff. If you've just tuned in, I'm Sharon and I blog over at I Restore Stuff and you can check out a lot of my DIY projects there. I love to paint furniture and decor, uh, all of that kind of thing. And of course, I've got, whoop, got to offload my brush. I have a home talk profile that you can check out a lot of my stuff there. And you'll see those listed probably at the top of the comments there. Um, whoa. See, I think that I'm going to get a little bit of bleed through there because I was just a little bit distracted. I'm hoping I've got all the words here. I'm nearly finished. Patience, people. Here we go. So what do you think so far? It kind of looks Christmassy. Looks like it's a song or a carol or something on there. And, whoop. Little stipple, just to finish off, just for the stipplers, that's for you guys. And we've just got ready, go. There we go. So that's looking like a great background right there for our Christmas sign. And as I said before, you could use any stencils that you've got at home already to make, you know, little backgrounds for all kinds of signs. If you saw my last uh, Home Talk DIY, you would have seen us do a transfer in graphics where I used this Moroccan stencil for the background. So stencils are great for backgrounds of other artworks. So there's another idea. If you missed that, you'll have to either jump over onto my page, I've got it in my videos there, or on Home Talk, go to their video section and hit live. If you um, are liking this DIY, did you know that you can share while you're watching? So if you want to, you can just go hit the share button, share it to a friend, share it to your page, share it to wherever. That would be awesome. So you can share and then it'll come back right back to where you left off, I think. I think it kind of pauses it, which is a really cool idea. So if you want to share, that's great. We're going to pick a winner in just a minute because I've got one more thing I need to show you. Do we have a question, Shireen? Uh, no, just, um, just recapping on some of those ideas yes. that you can think about which one you love the most. I had another one. Someone's come up with on the nice list, which I thought was very On clever. the nice list. Great idea. Using those words. <laughs> That's I a want great to idea. go home and have a go at it myself now. What, yeah. What ones can I come up with? So ho, ho, I know ho. You know. All is calm. Santa's house, Santa's cabin, Noel, on the nice list. Um, and a, a, quite a few people just asking for one more shout out about where the stencils came from. Oh, where the stencils came from is um, you can find these particular ones at uh, Funky Junk. They're Funky Junk Old Sign Stencils. So if you Google that, you'll be able to find that. And Donna Williams is um, awesome at creating these fun things. Before we choose a winner and go to our making our Christmas sign, I want to show you how to do a drop shadow. So if you've ever wondered how do people get those shadows on their stencils, I wanted to fit that into this DIY live. So give me a love if you want to see that. That's a lot of fun. 
So we've done this sign. This is the one I just did, right? Beach house. So to make a shadow, I'm going to have to choose a different colour. And you can either just leave the beach like it is and then just do a drop shadow on the house part or you can drop shadow both of them. So what you want to do is choose a contrasting colour to make that happen. So for a shadow, if you can come in close here, wonderful Marty, my husband. Um, he's got that. Look how nice that is. Okay, so we can either move it up and to the right. You said just imagine where the light's coming from. So the grey part now is actually going to act as our shadow. So imagine the light's coming from here and looking down, or you could make it come from the other way. Light coming down this way, shadow showing this way. You can make a shadow coming from below. So I'm just going to make this shadow come from up this way. Okay. So we just place the stencil really carefully like that. And now I have to think of a colour to put on top of that, which I think we might just go with that as your colour because we've got it already on the sign and I don't have to think about trying to choose another one that's going to coordinate with it. <clears throat> and I'm just going to paint over the top of that. So we're just stenciling in much the same way and we're offloading the brush just like we did before and I'm going to swirl. Now I'd love to hear in the comments if you always used to just stipple and now you think you're going to have a go at that swirling method. Who wants to have a go at that? Okay, we've dried off the brush. If you've just joined us, it's all about drying off the brush. We're going to do a drop shadow on this sign. Are you ready? So we're going to swirl right here. And I'm holding the brush again just down low because it's um, uh, long bristles and it's kind of getting in the way. Now, if you can notice... What's going to happen here is we probably will need two coats. So while this coat is drying, we might start thinking about our Christmas sign and choosing a winning word to do on our sign. Uh, but you can sort of see the dark grey behind it. So if I was to leave it like this, we'd probably find that it's a bit see-through and the drop shadow is not working as effectively. So we just go over it with a second coat once this coat has dried. <clears throat> just swirling around and the reason I can swirl without getting any bleeding underneath or without getting any seeping underneath is because I've offloaded the brush and it's quite dry, which is why we just need to go over for it with a couple of coats in this case because, <clears throat> because we've offloaded and it's not as much on the brush. How are we going there, people? Do we have any swirlers now? Yep, there's quite a few people who are now convinced they're to give gonna, it a go. They're going to be convinced. They're going to give it a go. Good just on you. Just while you're doing this, yes. Sharon, just a, a few more people asking um, about the type of paint you're using um, today on your sign. Um, I happen to have Fusion Mineral Paint and it's the azure colour I'm using right now and it's a beautiful beachy coastal blue absolutely beautiful so I want you I just wanted to show you how you can still see that gray there so we're gonna let that dry a minute while we talk about our Christmas sign and get that happening um, <clears throat> and then we'll go over with a second coat and we can reveal the drop shadow which is going to look just amazing and awesome so I think um, for the purpose of our beautiful video DIY, what shall we go with? I think I like, what does Noel even mean? Shireen, what, what does, does Noel, Noel mean? mean? <laughs> it's a Christmas <laughs> word, hang on. It is. Let me I'm ask sure. Siri. Oh. Hey Siri, what does Noel mean? Noel means Christmas, especially as a refrain in carols and on Christmas cards. Thank you Siri. So Christmas, Noel means, according to Siri, Christmas, especially as a refrain in carols and on Christmas cards. Did I say that just like Siri? <laughs> it sounds like a perfect Siri choice. with an Australian accent. Oh, does Siri have um, different accents in different countries? Do you know? Yes, she does. She does. So there you heard it, Australian Siri, telling me what Noel means. And it means Christmas, of course. But I'm probably sure it derived from somewhere else, like, you know, it had some other deeper meaning. But 
I would like, who said Noel, Shireen? Melissa Jones was one of the first people to mention Noel. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. You have won a Home Talk tote bag, and we are going to make the word Noel across here. So now I have to find my letters to make that happen. And don't tell me it's in the house. Oh, yes, I can, I've got another house word. So we've got N, we've got O, then we can do E. Where's the L? Where is the L, people? Do we have an L, Shireen? <laughs> I can't find the L. Okay, maybe it's here somewhere. Rentals. Okay, so this one says lake rentals, and we have an L right there. So no L. We can make it, guys. All righty. So we've got to line up our letters for no L. We're, uh, so I'm imagining, oh, this is tricky. So I'm imagining halfway there, so we're going to have to have an O and an E. So I might do those first, all right? So we're just <laughs> eyeballing it. Here I am, the professional eyeballer. I'm just going to put that right there. Uh, sign to help me here. And we're going to have to have probably a darker colour to make this stand out. So I'm going to go with that grey that we were using before. And find another piece of paper. So I hope you've learnt some pro tips here on DIY Live, Home Talk, stenciling. Um, you know, if you have stenciled before and you've had some problems, let me know if, there's, if they've been helpful today in making things work for your stenciling art, stenciling wall art, stenciling gifts. Oh, I was nearly going to do the whole sign. Now, I should probably put a bit of painter's tape down just to be a good example. Oh, I've just painted that with the words there. So I'm just doing the O, right? So I'm showing you how you can make a Christmas sign without even having a Christmas stencil. So I'm doing the O first, so I can then put the N here and the E here and the L there. Got it. Just do the O, Sharon. Don't, don't do the other letters. Now, another tip you can do is put a little piece of paper, say, for example, my little run sheet here, right here so that we don't mess up the rest of the board when we're trying to stencil here. And I'll just put my hand here because we might actually accidentally go to the other letters and we don't want that because we're not making the word resort we're going to make this a Christmas sign now the only reason I'm doing gray which seems like a bit of a dark color for a Christmas sign is because we've got red and then white so it really needed to stand out and again we can do that drop shadow method with this as well so here we go nice crisp O and now I need to find the E for Noel just making sure we don't have any paint coming onto the O back there. I might just grab my little cloth. <clears throat> because what can happen is, as we lay it down, there may be just a little bit of paint somewhere else. I'm just going to make sure there isn't. So we're making the E next. N-O-E. Hopefully I'm just eyeballing it again, people. Wish me luck. Okay. Paint is taped down. And I should even have enough left on this brush. I'm going to move my paper slightly forward without smudging that word there. I am spelling it right, Shari, and you've tell me if I'm doing this wrong, aren't you? N -O -E -L. You've got it 100% right, Shari. Awesome. Always. <laughs> Thanks, my friend. Everyone's saying you make it look so easy. Oh, They're okay. Amazed with your ability to just eyeball it. Oh, my goodness. It's a bit nerve-wracking on, you know, how many viewers have we got there now? Anyway. N-O-E, we've done the E. I think we're going to do this with one whole bit of brush that's... Oh, okay, so we've got a little smudge there. That's probably because I didn't put the paper on before. What letter am I looking for, guys? N, so we'll get the N Oof. from cabin. Putting that right next to... We could have even spaced this out even further, you know, but... Okay, we'll put that... Yeah, so we don't, well, I've got to look at it first. So we line it up first. And I've got the N up the right way, eyeballing it again. Hopefully I've got the right distance. You know that if you're doing this at home, you can use your wonderful, I'm going to put this right here, painter's tape, so it'll keep that still there. And you could always put painter's tape over the whole lot. Now that would be smart. Oh my goodness, Sharon, you're a genius. 
Okay, so <laughs> we just put the painter's tape over the whole next door letter. It sticks it to the sign as well as I don't get paint on the next door letter. Great tip right there. Glad you thought of it. Okay, doing the N for Noel. I guess N doesn't works either way if we have it upside down or not. The dark colours seem to go to work really well because uh, they have greater coverage and you don't have to do a second coat. So Noel done, and we'll just carefully remove that tape. Woo! It's coming along fine. How am I going with the eyeballing? N O E L for rentals. Lining it up first, uh, L. Okay, so who was our winner again, Melissa? It was Melissa Jones. Melissa Jones has won a tote bag from She's Home Talk. Very excited. What happened to our Christmas music? I was sure we were playing some Christmas music here in the background earlier. This gets us in the mood, you know? As I was saying, I'm from Australia and it's very hot here right now. Hot weather, oh, on cue. You are awesome. That's my son, right there. <laughs> He's playing the Christmas music for me. And who is this? Probably Bing Crosby. Oh, see, now we're on the ball, guys. We've nearly finished our Christmas sign, and it's nearly holidays. Noel, N-O-E-L, which means Christmas, according to Siri. Okay. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas, how, <laughs> how appropriate. And here we are sweltering in Australia, so you know, these songs, oh well. Okay, so we have the Noel sign, and we have a Christmas sign. Now, what we can do is also make that one, you could make that into a drop shadow as well. I don't know if I eyeballed that, you know, exactly, did I? That's gonna annoy me, but anyway. <laughs> Looks you can also good. make a white over the top of that and make the grey drop shadow, which will also make it stand out just beautifully for Christmas. So while we've got this one here, if you remember earlier, we were painting a cabin res no, a beach resort sign, but I'm using the, what did I do? I just put that on top. <clears throat> okay, so we were doing beach house. And I need to find the colour that I was using so I can just do a second coat because as you saw before, it, you can still see the grey drop shadow through that. So what we're going to do is do another coat of azure. 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 Beachy coastal blue. And remember the key to stenciling well is offloading your brush. Sharon, just a few yes. people asking, when you finish these signs, yes. do you need to um, put any coating over the top of them or do you just leave them as is? Okay, good question. So I usually, if it's going to be outside, definitely. It depends on the paint you're using, I suppose. But if you want to use a top coat, you can. You can use any kind of um, polyurethane varnish, wipe-on, um, tough coat, sealer kind of product that you like so that will just help to seal it in especially if it was going to be outdoors or somewhere you'd want to make sure your signs it'll help protect it from the weather so you can see that's got heaps more coverage on it now and swirling 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 okay let's see what you've learnt so far when I'm swirling I want to see it in the comments, okay, Shireen, so watching. Okay. When I'm swirling, why does it not seep underneath the stencil? Who can tell me? Let's see who's been a good student and learnt <laughs> from today's class. Let's see what we've got there. When I'm swirling like this, why does it not bleed through under the stencil? See who's been listening, Shireen, okay? Okay. Now That's someone giving. has, I think they've got it right. You Off, think they've got it right? Offloading the brush. Offloading the brush is correct. Yes. If you answered offloading the brush, which means wiping it on a cloth or a paper yes. to get most of the paint off, then you are correct. And you 
go to the top of the class. Look at all these wonderful Woo! people. Robin and Lisa and Suzanne oh, and Desiree and Linda. Oh, They're good on you, girls. They're all getting it right. Good on you. Okay, one more little bit and I think we're ready to show the drop shadow reveal. Okay. Are you ready to come in close there, Marty? What are you doing over there, Mr. Camera Guy? Are you on the ball? <laughs> he is on the ball. <laughs> He's on the ball. Are you ready? Here's my close-up dude. I love him. We had our anniversary this, this week, babe, didn't we? What are, you <laughs> what are you doing? We had our anniversary. Now, this is a test for him. How many years was it? How many years anniversary? Tw 24. Oh, he, you baby, you go to the top of the class. You are amazing. <laughs> 24 years. Woo! Shout out for 24 years wedding anniversary, 1992. It was a good year. Okay, guys, we are so ready. And Mr. Close-Up Guy is ready to show you the big reveal of our drop shadow. So you can see we've done two coats there. Ta-da! How cool does that look? Woo! That is um, amazing. Everyone goes, yeah, wow. So if you've never done a drop shadow before on your stencils, you can do that with anything. You can do it with images, but it works best with words, I guess, because it you know, really gives it that pop feeling. It gives it like a bit of a 3D look. What do you reckon? You like? That's awesome. Beautiful. <clears throat> so like I was saying, with the Noel sign, we could do a white over the top of that, and I reckon it would go great. And the other thing is that with the Noel sign, do we have time? What's the time? I haven't even looked at what the time is, guys. Okay, we just have a few minutes, and I'm going to do this really quickly. It's just to show you how cool a drop shadow would look on the Noel. And we're going to, oh, hang on, no, I can't. <laughs> I don't have time to do it. We might. I'll just do it. If you want to hang around, you can um, watch the Noel sign get a drop shadow on it. I'm going to start with the N. Because what I'm thinking is, it's kind of a little bit this way, and so I, th I bring the shadow over this side. That would work great, don't you reckon? So I'm just going to bring it over this way a little bit, and I'll have to use white. But if you, if you can't hang around and you've got to go, I understand. Um, but you've got to watch Home Talk tomorrow at 1 p.m. EST because we're showing you how to make dollar store Christmas decor. So there you go, dollar store Christmas decor tomorrow, 1 p.m. EST. So be there on the Home Talk page live. Um, so guys, as I finish, I'm just going to do this really quickly. So if you want to hang around, that is awesome. And here we go, stenciling the white on top of Noel to make a drop shadow. Were they liking those drop shadows, Shireen? Was that a cool idea? Has people already done that before? Yeah, no, a lot of people said they'd not thought of doing drop shadow or were too scared to give it a go. Yeah, I'm just so going to So now your tips it. have given them some good ideas. They're going to have a go great. at it now. That is awesome. I'm so glad. I really think this will look better with the drop shadow grey and the white. Don't you think? It just feels a little bit more Christmassy to have Noel in a bit of a white, white colour. Quite a lot of people suggesting too that if they had some stencils of like holly or something like that, they'd pop it up yes, in the corner of the sign. Absolutely. I reckon that's a great idea too. Here's the drop shadow that we're working on with the Noel sign as well. Now this is one I really need to use my... <laughs> I've got to remember what... Okay, I'm going up and to the left. So we have to remember up and to the left as I do my Noel sign. Just getting this done for you really quickly so you can see how it turns out. And then you have a beautiful sign ready for your mantle. This one's for the stipplers out there. We're just going to do a little stipple. Hey, it even looks kind of like snow or something. Being very careful not to go over the edge to the other letters. And I should have some painter's tape, but for time's sake, I'm just going for it. The other thing that I should mention is, oh, do this here. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention is if you want your sign to have more of a uh, rustic appeal and your stencil 
sometimes your stencil, your backboard, or whatever you're going to do it on, or your crate, or your piece of furniture, might have a really rustic look to it. To, uh, you need to probably sand back your stencil. So, um, just like this, I'll show you while I'm doing that at the same time, yeah. So I've just painted this house, so I won't show you on house, but on the beach sign, it's only, it's kind of new and fresh looking. So you grab a really fine grit sandpaper and just gently rub over the top of your beach word. And that gives it more of a rustic feel, like it hasn't just been, hasn't just been painted. Um, works really well. And so I would do it to the house part too once it's dried. But as I said, we've only just painted that then, so we'll wait for that to dry. Oh, that Christmas music's beautiful. We haven't got our Christmas tree up yet. Does anyone else have their Christmas tree up? Anyone? Someone suggested draping Christmas lights around the sign oh, too. Oh, beautiful. That would look pretty. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah. That would work really well. It'd be nice to have a, a drop light just dropping on the sign. It's a lovely feature. You could put it on your fireplace if you had a fireplace. We don't have many fireplaces in Australia, do we, Shireen? No, a little bit too hot. Not up here in Queensland, that's for sure, because it's very hot. And our last letter for Noel getting that drop shadow created. I'm just so glad I went ahead and did this because I think that's gonna be nice. And up and to the left, just, you know, eyeballing it. If you're fussy, please get a measuring tape or something. But here we go, last letter before we sign off. And I hope you've all learnt so much about stenciling today. And if you haven't tried stenciling, go out and grab some. You can just pick any stencils from wherever. Craft store, dollar store. I'd love to see you over at my Iris Store Stuff page. Give me a like over there. And um, join me on my blog. You can subscribe to get updates and DIY tutorials and tips and all kinds of things. I blog over at i-restorestuff.com and you'll see the links in the comments there. I'm Sharon from Australia and here we are signing off with our beautiful Noel Christmas sign all done for you. And again, as I said before with the beach sign, you could, when that's dry, give it a bit of a sand down so that you could make the sign a little bit more of a rustic feel. So I hope you enjoyed that today. Don't forget to sign, um, tune in tomorrow. Home Talk Live. They're going to be teaching you how to make dollar store Christmas decor. I'm a poet. <laughs> really. Have a great evening, everybody. Or if it's morning for you, have a great day. See ya.